Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, dial indicators. If and you're not familiar with that, we'll start baby steps with the machinist approximators. These are calipers. Some people believe these are super accurate. It depends on the kind of work you're doing. You know, if you're mangling dead tree carcasses, chances are this will get you where you need to be. Most of the time with what I'm doing, good enough for the girls I go what with. If you need it more accurate, you're going to need some micrometers. Beautiful set here with the four inch standard. Stare it. And it's actually got a ratcheting mechanism to ensure. Now it's about uh, 18 degrees centigrade here in the shop. And the standard dead nuts on four inches, 4.000 inches. Dead nuts on the approximators. Make sure it's zeroed. And I'm heating this standard up with my hands now. As we can see, we're a full thou off. I'll try and get us. These standards are ground on the end so that even if you're off by a little bit, you're not off by a little bit. There's some wiggle room there, but we can see we're off by one and a half thou. So the approximators. These are likely what you'll be familiar with in the machine shop when you first start out. Second measuring tool you're going to want to get, dial indicator. Now a couple of things you're going to use one of these for on the lathe, steady, steady, is centering your work. Even in a three jaw universal where the jaws come in at the same rate, you're still not going to center right off the hop. What you got to do is indicate. Now we just snug up the chuck. Now we turn it. So that's the low spot there. That's the highest spot right there. So we bring that over to here. Give it a little tappy tap tap. About half of the way you want to go. We'll try that again. Now we're getting there. So that's the high spot. Tappy tap tap tap. And so forth. So that's what the dial indicator is used on the lathe for also you can use this I just got this meat tutorial and this one we're gonna have a part well we'll have both apart see what the difference is this is jeweled this is non jeweled the other thing we can use a dial indicator for super useful is the axes on your lathe that doesn't have a thumb a delineated thumb screw it doesn't have the tumbler that tells you how deep you're cutting you put that on your way and then as you run this axis, you can see exactly how deep you're going. So this one has a one inch travel. Unfortunately, we're only hitting about 400 thou and then she binds up. Calibrated in 96. I got underwear older than that. So she's been around the block a few times. Still oh, nothing wrong with it other than for some reason it's getting sticky. So. We'll take her apart and have a look at that one as well while we look at this one for comparison's sake. Now over here on our favorite pinup girl, the clapped out Bridgeport milling machine, what we do is we put this bar in the collet and we can check to make sure when we put the mount the vise or if we bang it or something, we can make sure that it's perfectly square by running the indicator along the jaw face, the non-moving jaw face. The other thing we can do is we make sure that the table is while well, the head is perfectly in tram with the table. If we take this and we spin it around and indicate the table over here, then we spin it around and indicate the table over here. If there's a difference, we know the head is off kilter. That's a real pain in the cunning lingual. So you get working away and lo and behold, your head's out of tram, spoils the work. So every once in a while, especially if you're moving stuff around, you gotta make sure that your head is screwed on right. Now these are nicely accurate, quick, repeatable for you they're essentially the analog of these only for measuring a different way so if you need more accuracy so this will do 0 0.02 0 0.025 millimeters if you need more accuracy what you got to have is a test indicator and it's got a little lever arm here with a bulbous end and this measures this particular one measures not point not one millimeters so four thou in a human hair this will divide a human hair four times this will divide a human hair uh, eight times and uh, nine times
quite a bit more accurate. So test indicator, we're not going to get into that, but there is something more accurate along the lines of a micrometer. The, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Let's get into it. So these sterrets, they have two arrangements. You can clamp here or you can clamp back here, depending on what dial indicator base you have. So this is actually, this one will be plastic and this one's actually powder coated aluminium. Double lot Phillips screws, right for the losing. And here we are. There's the mechanism, bright brass mechanism. It's our rack and pinion. So the rack drives a pinion. You can see there's a brass bushing, but inside that brass bushing is ruby or carborundum. So a jewel of some sort. Wouldn't be natural, of course, it'd be man-made. It's still good uh, lubricity there. And then this runs a bowl gear. It runs a, an idler gear that runs the dial. So this, if you look straight through, it's running the 100,000. And then there'll be another little gear here that transmits it with a gear reduction increase something something to the other one so this can go around 10 times and this one goes around one time now if you listen real close if I hold that gear you can hear the slop in the rack and pinion the thing is about involute gear teeth is if you do not have backlash if you do not have slop they will make their own so it's not a matter of super accuracy it's a matter that the gear tooth, if it engages and there's no backlash, it wedges itself in there. Eventually, it will make its own backlash. So, any kind of gearing, there's going to be some amount of slop. But, of course, if we preload this with the spring, we're on that one side of the gear tooth. So, we're not worried about the slop. Same thing when you're running an axis on your lathe. You know, you get your first lathe and you'll notice there's quite a bit of slop from forward to backwards. And you try and tighten that up, you get different nuts, you buy a whole bunch of parts. The thing is, it's an Acme thread. It's supposed to have slop. You're, you're going to have slop whether you're pushing the cutter or you're pulling the cutter. Well, the old microscope crapped a bed. The new one's far, far better. But I'm recording here, so we'll swap that in somehow through the magic of TV. We can see here, you see that red bit? That's the ruby. There's the slop there. There's my big old finger. We got some extra light on the subject. I guesstimate two, one and a half, two thou of slop. You can see the surface finish on the rod. And that D-bird edge again. Interesting to look at through the scope. Just for tits and pickles, we're going to have a look. I found this Power Fister. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's a Princess Auto Power Fister. Uh, we lost the gland in there somewhere. But you can tell she's way crustier, chintzier. Does have a metal bezel, but and that's metal as well. Powder coat, not crinkled. Let's have a look in there anyway and see. It doesn't feel the same. Uh, it's not inspiring confidence at all. It does have these little doodads. Uh, just what you'd expect. A lot crustier. UHMW, maybe Delarin guide there. All the gears are brass instead of hardened steel. Also, this is an odd feature. See how small that pinion is? That means that it turns twice for one inch instead of, you see the scale there, kind of oddball. You know, having a look in here, other than the plastique and the chintzy feel, it's not all that bad, really. I mean, uh, yeah, the Power Fister badge, it's a little embarrassing. But overall, probably get what you pay for. We'll get her under the microscope here. Okay, there's the spring. It's that little tiny gear. Both the gear, which would be a steel gear, and the rod are nicer looking than the Starrett. I wonder if that is just because I'm zoomed out a little bit or I have a different lighting. Let's see here. I did 
didn't help all that much, but let's see if we can get zoomed in a little bit. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, no, no. It's just the amount of magnification. And we can see the grinding marks, the individual grinding marks on that guy. Now here we got the meat to toil. One thing that's nicer is the ring is metal. It's a metal ring, steel ring. This, just plastique. Quite a bit more aggressive neural on there. You really crank her down, not that you need to. This is a little bit taller. Other than that, very much the same. We'll have a look at her. Same. So a little bit thicker gauge as well. Of course, we saw inside was one piece die cast zinc for all the the bearing housings and all the mechanical assembly housing. So totally different setup. You see more of the inwards, which is kind of nice. Here we got a big old watch spring in addition to this spring. And uh, this is probably the same arrangement. That's a lot stiffer. A lot, lot stiffer. And then stops right there. Let's get the microscope out. Uh, as, as we can see here, these bushings. No rubies on there. And the rack actuates this pinion, which is directly coupled to the, the, the big hand, or the, the little hand in this case. And the big hand is coupled into here. And then there's a watch spring on the big hand as well. Let's get in there with the microscope, see what's going on with that rack, where it binds up. Despite the distinct lack of synthetic rubies, a.k.a. fused alumina with a bit of vanadium, chromium, a.k.a. corundum, the, the machining is a lot nicer on this meat to toil. Look at the rod and the gear itself. There's no crusty rolled over edge. Despite this gauge being nigh on 30 years old, there's no appreciable slop in the rack. That's what happens when you start off with a quality item. No. Now I assumed, and according to Monty Python, when you assume you make an ass out of you and me, that the rack was full of schmoo. That doesn't appear to be the case. Next easiest thing, shaft is bent. Had a BMX accident in its younger years. Light curve to the left. Let's see her. Oh yeah. That right there is oh she's fucking jammed right in there. Got an odd compound bend here. This might be tough to get rid of. Right along here. Right along here it's rubbing. And then it switches so there's an S bend in this. I might I don't recall, but I might have had a go with this previous. That's the problem with uh, getting old. Little trivialities like this tend to disappear from your mind whether you had a go at it or not. If I was a smarter man, I would have marked this. Well, she's already fucked. Not much, you know, you can't fuck her anymore. Only got a quarter inch of travel there. So, we want to minimally disrupt this because it is a precision instrument. We got to take, looks like we got to take the spring of a thing off and we'll have to take this guide off maybe be able to spin it out of the way yeah yeah i get to set to looking at this kind of a fool's errand looking for the girl with the corkscrew part way off uh, i'm just gonna put this in the vise give her a tweak i mean it's <laughs> there ain't no saving that the dick in the precision vice jaws carefuling carefuling just give her a Lee Trevino feather touch, the 200 pound gorilla. Hey, that's the cock for Dolly right there, Bob Durante. Wah -wah. Oh, that's good enough for, uh, definitely good enough for the ways. Just on the lathe. Perfect. Right? Orn. Now, looking at these, you know, this, this will get you 99% of the way there, however. You're going to want to pass this day. You know, you want to use this every day. Yeah, depends. Uh, hey, you got to spend your money on something. Am I right? Might as well spend it on some kind of nice tool that you'll enjoy using for the rest of your life. Me and this got an understanding. I like keeping it around. Didn't want to have to throw it away. Oh, speaking of which, so 
I went down to Grizzly Tools. Oh, Grizzly is right. It got fucked by a Grizzly. Look at this fucking thing. Bullnose. If they, they never have the fucking shit in stock. I, I quit. I quit Grizzly Tools. I quit. Look at this. Bullnose. Go to the land of the free, the home of the brave. Although nothing is free, oddly enough. Check this out. Bullnose. Oh, beauty. Beauty. Bullnose. Got this horrible fucking detent. Look at this. Goes right into a detent. Snap. <laughs> so right off the hoop, it's hoopa juped. Now look at this. You get looking at her close. Focus, you fuck. It's fucking cracked right half in two. How the fuck does that get through QC? Look at that. You get that spinning up to a million ripples. I fucking just about kill you. Fly off and Jesus. Piece of junk. Be better off just buying it right from the source. Screw Grizzly. That sucks, eh? Holy Jesus. I don't know what the fuck's going on up there, but it doesn't sound good. I better finish this up. There's something. Oh, stickers! Yeah! Yeah, I made some stickers. Guys are asking me for toolbox stickers. I finally made some, and they're fucking awesome. Featuring our favorite pinup girl, the clapped out Bridgeport billing machine, encapsulates exactly how you feel about your tools. Uh, they're over on Etsy. I'll mail them out to you if you want one. Uh, name in the doobly do, and also if I don't decide to mail you one, you can just go ahead and buy them. They're fucking cheap, two fifty a piece. Two for two for five bucks. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice. Hey works every time that gives me an idea so this one's a little smaller head but it's got the nice back plunger 196 the starrett and it's got all different size smaller rods so you got to get the proper adapter but yeah pride of the fleet right here this one's a nice one what in the jesus henry kissinger do you need so many dial indicators for what are you my wife <laughs>